The War of the Rebellion is often considered one of the first modern wars. It is important to note that many of the accomplishments that made the War of the Rebellion modern predate the War of the Rebellion, and technically the Crimean War deserves the title far more. However, the War of the Rebellion was special in that troops were much quicker and more frequently shuffled around the country to deal with emerging crises. The vast railroad network of the United States permitted the movement of troops and helped in alter the face of war. This will be a five episode series looking at troop movement. This episode will focus on the general movement of troops and the emergence of the US transportation network. When Napoleon moved his forces, they had to march, dealing with mud and other issues that impact their progress. Sometimes soldiers were luckier and could hitch a ride with the navy or on river barges. Those were rare situations, and most infantrymen in the 19th century spent much time marching to battle. The supplies consumed by these infantrymen came cumbersomely down the same roads and wagons creating long lines of these vehicles, clogging up roads. The advent of the railroad changed all this. The United States had copied many transportation innovations from Europe, including the canal system, which was highlighted by the construction and profitability of the Erie Canal, which dramatically changed upstate New York and opened the Great Lakes region. It was a masterpiece of engineering. However, canals were dated almost as soon as their construction started. In 1827, construction on the first private long-distance railroad began. The Baltimore and Ohio Railroad reached its destination on the Ohio River 26 years after construction had started. By the middle of the 1850s, the United States had constructed 24,000 miles of rails, about half of the world's railroad mileage. The great benefit of the railroad was that trains could run all day, every day, and in any kind of weather, without worrying about mud, it was possible to move goods and people much faster, cutting down what had been days of travel into mere hours on a dependable schedule. The railroads changed the national environment, with New Orleans losing its importance as an exit port for Western goods. In 1820, 60% of Western goods passed through the Crescent City. By 1860, the share had dropped to 23%, as more goods could go by rail to New York or Baltimore. Railroads acquired more skilled engineers to lay out track and managers who could oversee these complex operations. Railroads remained a rather fragmented operation, with small lines dominating the national landscape, few of them very profitable. Adding to the fragmented nature of the system was that railroad companies felt bridging major rivers was too costly. There was also no uniform gauge standard. At the outbreak of the war, the U.S. government quickly realized the need to manage such a vital war resource. Railroad managers placed patriotism second after their support for the railroads they worked for. As a result, rebel attacks against the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad cooled secessionist interests in the Baltimore business community. Thomas Scott, a former vice president at the Pennsylvania Central Railroad and new assistant secretary of war, called for leaving the railroads under private civilian management. 
but the railroads understood they needed to cooperate with the government. He was able to arrange uniform shipping rates based on a sliding scale for cargo weight and distance. The arrangement created cost stability for the government. Finally, the War Department recognized that civilians were better equipped to efficiently manage the railroads and telegraphs. As a result, on January 31st, 1862, the US military railroad came into existence under the leadership of engineers Daniel McCollum and Herman Haupt. By the end of the war, US MRR had 25,000 workers with 419 engines, 6,330 cars, and over 2,100 miles of track. Haupt managed the construction and transportation aspects, whereas McCollum did the administration. Together, they created an effective machine. The United States had created an effective public-private partnership that allowed the government to better manage the war effort. The War of the Rebellion was not the first modern war, and as such, Previous conflict, as well as contemporary wars during the 1860s, also witnessed the use and experimentation with railroads. While not even remotely on par with the USMRR, the Grand Crimean Central Railway served a similar purpose of bringing supplies to the soldiers engaged in the siege of Sebastopol from the supply depot at Balaclava. The line was only 15 miles in length, but it made the movement of ammunition and provisions much easier. Even the Crimean War was not the first time a major military power used the railroad to move troops. In 1850, as tensions between Austria and Prussia increased, the Habsburg dynasty moved 70,000 troops to Bohemia. The concentration was possible because of Austria's railroad and telegraph lines. Sadly, the railroad turned against Austria in 1859 when Napoleon III used the French railroad system to concentrate 130,000 men in Italy. After the War of the Rebellion, the Prussians continued to perfect the use of the, of the railroad in their war machine. When war broke out with Austria, the Prussian military used telegraph and railroad to concentrate against the Austrians. The Prussians used five different railroads to move their troops to the border of Bohemia. Here, their advantage was lost as the troops from there moved on foot. Just like the War of the Rebellion, the Prussians had not prepared well, facing clogged rail lines. Tons of supplies ended up on neglected branch lines where they rotted away. Military planners were still experimenting with how to use the railroad, but they were making great progress, integrating this reliable and fast-moving means of transportation into their planning. The mid-19th century, Witness the modernization of war and the transportation of soldiers. Thank you for watching this episode of the War of the Rebellion channel. If you liked the material covered, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for new episodes. If there's a story of the War of the Rebellion you would like covered, please leave a comment. Use the comments to engage in conversations. Thank you for patronizing the War of the Rebellion channel.